My name is Chad Blair. I'm the politics editor at Honolulu Civil Bead, and it's a delight to be in Kona tonight to present to you this uh, forum with the mayoral candidates. I got to tell you something. We've done a number of these uh, pop-up election forums. We're not calling them debates. I realize the word debate was used in the promotional material, but it's not going to be like Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Don't you know? It's not going to be a talk about cats and dogs or anything like that. Um, but really, these are more talk story forums. And I got to tell you something. This has generated by far the greatest interest among any of our forums. That includes city and county councils, state senate, state house. Uh, we're even doing some for OHA uh, this year as well. You guys are clearly interested in this race. Well over 100 questions have come in previously. Usually it's about 15 to 20, so, and I have to do the rest of the questions. This time, I'm going to tell you all the questions are coming from you, from readers who have submitted them beforehand because we feel that this is a service to you, uh, the, the voters of the Big Island. Um, a few housekeeping notes, we are not live. This is not being live streamed. We will, however, be posting this later uh, on our website, on social media. For those who registered for the events, you'll be getting a notification of that. We'll send it right to you, but just to be clear, we are not live. We do ask you to turn off your cell phones. It is the most annoying thing. I have two cell phones, and they're both on vibrate. And you might hear them vibrate through the microphone because I'm getting notes from my, my, uh, my bosses here. Uh, but we, we do ask you to turn those phones on vibrate or just turn them off altogether. This is a civil discussion. We put civil in civil beat because that's a very important word to us, meaning you mind your manners, that you respect others, that you don't interrupt. Uh, we want to hear from the candidates. We want to hear from your questions. We don't want to hear from somebody standing and talking. You ever go to a forum and somebody has a question and it turns into a statement that runs? Fit? We're not going to do that. That is definitely not going to happen here. Uh, just to make sure, if you're not registered for the event, you can still go on Eventbrite and register with Civil Beat. But if you can't, just email us. You'll find our, our address on the website and, and we'll send you a link to the final recording. All these questions I said came beforehand, but we are also taking a handful of questions near the end on these flashcards. And the reason we do that is because, you know, we want to give you the opportunity. I got to tell you, we're not going to run short of questions. And we have a seven o'clock stop because Mayor Roth has to hit the Saddle Road and go back to Hilo. I don't know where you got to go, Kimo, but, uh, but um, we then also would have some time for people to talk story and come up and say hello to everybody. Uh, but uh, we'll do the best we can with these flashcards. I do want to tell you, there's been a lot of duplication already. This is the pile that I've already rejected because we've already got those questions on the list. They're very similar. There are a couple others I will try to get to as best as I can. It's nothing personal. We're just trying to streamline. Uh, there is Spam Musubi. Help yourself. I don't think we provided water. Is there a drinking fountain here? There is a drinking fountain. That's a good sign. After the event is done, if you don't mind, when we stop at 7, please help us put away these folding chairs. I believe they go into these gray frame-like objects. That'll help us a lot. Otherwise, there's just three of us, four of us, that have to break down all those chairs, and that would really help you a lot. I've tried to condense the topics into various categories to keep them all kind of uniform. So we go from one topic to another, and I'll just tell you what they are right now. The first topic is about Kona. The second is about wastewater. The third is about housing and related to that homelessness. Animals is the fourth it sounds like Jeopardy or something. <laughs> Animals for 400, please. Um, yeah. But I think you'll find these questions to be, I, I was very impressed by how thoughtful they were, how considerate. So without any further ado, I want to thank Mayor Mitch Roth uh, for joining us tonight and Dr. Kimo Alameda. And they've agreed to go by Mitch and Kimo, even though I've met them both for the first time tonight, <laughs> uh, just to keep it informal and talk story. I'll ask the question, we'll rotate back and forth. If you want to follow up real quickly, that's fine, but we are limited in the amount of time that we have. Um, okay, without further ado, let's get to it. I put Kona first because most of the questions were about Kona, and here's the first question. We'll go to Kimo first. Many people in Kailua Kona feel that the attention in the past has been tilted heavily towards Hilo. Even though a large portion of taxes come from the Kona side, what will you do if elected as mayor to make us feel you are a mayor for all the people on this island. Thank you, Chad. And uh, welcome, everybody. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Mitch uh, for being here today. You know, last night we was on uh, PBS and got up early this morning, and here we are again. So, um, you know, he's, he's still our mayor, and it's not, a, it's not an easy job. So thank you so much, Mitch. 
But yeah, I mean, the taxes do come from the west side, right? 70% of those taxes. Um, and yet, you know, you're only feeling 30% of the love. So what, 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 what can the mayor do? Well, the mayor can provide geographic parity. Um, you know, and I, and I believe that uh, this administration has tried, but I don't think it's enough. And our administration will, will push harder. Uh, I mean, just take a look at this, this park, right? That bathroom there is, is still uh, not working. You know, we, got, we don't have enough fields. I was here about two, about a month ago for the Kupuna softball, and they had a lot of complaints. Um, I got a campaign manager out in uh, South Kona. His name is uh, Randy Morris. He, he runs uh, the Randy's Huli Chicken and Ribs. And I got a very strong Kona team, as you can see from some of our uh, supporters here in the crowd today. And they inform me every single day that, that there is a disparity in, in services. Um, and so that's unfortunate, and our administration We'll fix that. Thank you. Mitch? Aloha, and thank you, Kimo, again. You know, this is a civil thing, and we've pretty been, much been civil the, the whole time. Um, is that going to change that. tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, four years ago when we were running, we made some promises. One of the promises that we would be here on the West Hawaii side, and we would be doing projects on this side. I'm here at least once a week. A lot of my directors are here at least once a week. We actually have directors that live on this side. That is very different from the last administration where you know Kona didn't see very many things. Um, we have been working on a lot of projects on this side. You may notice that a lot of your roads have been getting paved. We've actually tried to spread the love not just to Kona, but throughout the whole island. This is a big island. There's a lot of issues that this island uh, has. We have a budget that is not, you know, infinitive. I mean, we, it's like a pizza. There's 12 slices of pizza and we have to divide that pizza and we're trying to divide that pizza up as much as possible. I know Kimo talks about, you know, 70% of the funds coming here. I don't think he's saying that 70% of the funds are gonna be spent on this side. Um, I, I don't think that's possible. We are looking at trying to spread that fund, those funds as much as we can across the island, and we have done that. And again, we have been out here, we've been to meetings from Ka'u to North Kohala, from Kona to Hilo and Puna. A lot of needs on this island, and unfortunately, when we took over, there was a lot of infrastructure issues. Kimo brings up the bathrooms over here. We've been trying to get approval to build those bathrooms back, but there's, there's issues. Part of the issues are we have to get approval from Shipti. We recently got the approval. We have the plans going through. You know, the way government works, it, we have to follow rules and regulations. And it's important for a mayor to understand, it's easy to complain about things but we have to do things the right way in the right order. A shift to State Historic Preservation Division? Yes. Okay, let's stay with this, because uh, we'll start with Mitch and go back to, to Kimo on this same topic. The next concern related to the disproportionate share of the tax revenue is, there's a sense of mean, among some people that the problems are, are in fact being ignored. And this person named rec facilities, like the Kona Community Aquatic Center needs staffing and repairs. Concerns about failures of the deep wells, uh, Kuakini Highway being widened, um, uh, and others as well. And I'm just going to read right now. West side issues seem always on the back burner. Can we expect action or just more empty promises? Mitch and then Kimo. Yeah, so we've actually been doing quite a bit of work. Uh, the aquatic center has been a lot of work. Uh, right back here, we are in the process of putting in pickleball courts. Um, we have kind of torn down the road. We've put pavement on it. Uh, we are hopefully putting some uh, coat, coating on it this last week. Unfortunately, we had to do some, some other work, but that should be happening in the next couple of months. If you look at the parks projects, because I know that's one of the big things that has come up, you can see that there are a whole bunch of parks projects that have been funded for this year. When we came into office, there's, you have to understand, 302 park facilities throughout this island. We had a maintenance and repair budget of 450,000 for all of them, 
not just one of them, but all of them. We've raised that up to $6 million. We have work that's happening here, work that's happening at pretty much all of our parks. We just did a big project um, by Magic Sands. A lot of park projects. Roads, we've been working on roads. Uh, we are putting in housing. Housing is one of the biggest needs. We're working together to put housing. So you see above Costco, probably in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna have a housing facility with about 100 different units that's gonna be opening. Huge, huge issue. To put that housing in, we needed to put wastewater lines, $13 million in wastewater water lines. Um, there is a whole bunch of these projects that have been worked on and continue to be worked on. Unfortunately, we have billions, billions of dollars of needs with hundreds of millions of dollars of funding and 60% of that goes to employees. Okay, thanks. Chemo. A couple of things, thanks Mitch for that. First, uh, you know, I hear you talking and triggering some thoughts. So the first thought is if you walk into West Hawaii Civic Center, Okay, it, it is not geographically equitable in terms of staffing. And how I know is because you'll see signs that say vacant call Hilo number. That's unacceptable. Okay, if you look at the deputies and, and the directors, um, for example, you know, the, you should have a director out here. For, for one of the major, there's 20 departments. I mean, you could at least have a few directors out on the west side, especially like for building, for example. I mean, if most of the construction is in the west side, shouldn't we have a planning director from the west side? You know, that, 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 that's the kind of thinking that, that, that I'm considering. Hold your applause. Thank you. I mean, that's geographic, geographic equity. Now, we talked a little bit about the roads, and, and I see it too, Mitch, no doubt. I mean, you know, your workers are really uh, doing it. But, you know, I'm a basketball coach, been a coach for 20 years. You cannot start playing the game in the fourth quarter. Game's almost over. Okay? I mean, we haven't seen much in the first three, three, three years. And, and, th and that's one of the reasons I'm running. Um, you know, we, you need attention and you need attention quick. Now, this is how you know you're, uh, you, you know, I don't want to say stepchild, but if I was in corner, that's what I would feel like. Because you look at the capital improvement budget. So there's two budgets, right? There's that first budget, right, the operations, and then there's capital improvements. If you look in that budget, you'll see almost nothing for the west side. Evidence is in the, is in the pudding, right? I mean, that's, that's where it is. And if it's not there, then it ain't happening. I don't know if you guys remember the Wendy's commercial, but show me the meat, okay? It's not there. And, and you know, you need, you need attention. And so our administration, you know, I got seven kids, okay? I know how to share the pizza, okay? And I gotta tell you, if you're gonna do a project on the, if you're gonna build a, a project on the east side, like say you wanna build a, a gym or a multi-purpose play court, right? Okay, well you just built Paneva, the prior administration had built the uh, Kinoi Complex, Waimea also had some, uh, so, some projects there regarding, why don't you just take turns, right? So in my administration, I'll just tell my cabinet, I'm sorry, but I, I don't think we can build anything on the, on the east side until we build something on the west side. It's so simple, it's common sense to me. Before you build another multi-purpose play court in, in East Hawaii, maybe you should build something out in Higashihara Park. Those kids are playing in the hot sun. Thank you. Okay? I know because, because although I'm from Hilo, I got family in every district. I got a, I got a, a sister and a, and a, and a brother-in-law that lives right there in, in Honau now. Um, I got my campaign manager out there in, in, in South Kona. I got an auntie lives in Kailua. So, you know, when you got family all over, believe me, the first pe person that's going to give you a call when there's inequity is your family. Okay? So who's going to hold me accountable? I don't got to wait for the county council. Okay? Okay. Who's going to hold me accountable is, is my family. Thank you. Thank you, so, Kimo. Mitch, so, go ahead. Yeah, so you know, a couple of things. Uh, our administration hasn't built new parks. We've been trying to fix parks because there's a lot of parks that have been broken down. We've had you know, buildings that were holding themselves up with uh, termites holding arms and seeing Kumbaya. The only park mm -hmm. that we are planning as a new park at this time is the West Hawaii Regional Facility. That is the only park we have been meeting and you know, that's gonna be like a $200 million project when all is said and done. We're looking at water, we're looking at, you know, planning. There are plans that are going through. Again, when you go through, you know, government building, it takes time. A lot of people don't realize that, but we have state issues that come up as well. We have Seaworm, uh, which is the Commission on Water Resource Management. That 
prevents a lot of things from happening on this side of the island. We have land use commission, it may take a couple of years. We have the state historic preservation, uh, which you know can take a lot of years. It, you know, it's interesting. We talk about those bathrooms um, in the Kenoy administration. They started the request to Shifty, and we're just getting the approval now. So a lot of people don't realize it's not things that we can just say, hey, we're going to do it. We have to follow the rules. Lorraine and, Lorraine and I, that was like 30 years ago, Billy, right? Billy Kenoy. Oh, you said Kenoy, Billy, Billy Kenoy. My bad, my hearing in this echoey building. Kimo, if you don't mind, let's move on because we're staying with Kona. Any plans to help the parking situation in downtown Kona, Ali'i Drive? Too many, I'm hearing laughter, too many parking lot owners that don't seem to live locally are now, now charging the locals for parking, which is hurting businesses. Absolutely, I see the trend also on the east side, the north side, and the south side too. So there's this trend, right? So there's this parking, parking that was we thought was belonged to the county or the state. Like you know, locals could park there, tourists could park there. And all of a sudden, you you see fence coming up, and now there's the toll booth. You know that's totally unacceptable. I went to Huggles and I had uh, a while back just to have lunch, and the parking was more than the lunch. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. So I think the county needs to. If I got elected, I got to tell you, I would bring those property owners together, sit them on a table, and say. What's the deal, right? First of all, where are you from? Okay, if you're not, if you're not from here, we're gonna have a, a longer talk story. Okay, because, because this is hurting our, not just our local population, but it's hurting our tourists. It's making, it's making it not, not comfortable to visit. So, you know, first I would incentivize them, right? I'd would, I would, I would consider things like, maybe we can freeze the property tax on this parking lot if you can let our locals park for free or let our tourists park for free. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe we could explore that. I don't know the legalities, but, but you cannot say no. You cannot stop, not, you cannot not try. Also, maybe I would get the business community to come together and say, if that's not gonna work for whatever legal reasons, maybe we gotta, this is a big business district, maybe everybody chip in to reduce the cost. Or maybe we give a stipend to the parking owners every month, see if they would break even, if the county can get the funds for that, $3,000 a month, that'll reduce the cost, something. But you cannot not, try to solve it. Our administration will always try to solve problems. We'll never give up on you. Okay, parking, Kailua Kona. Yeah, so, you know, this is a really unfortunate problem, and, you know, Kimo is, is right. These parking stalls are owned by private owners. We have tried to bring them together and, and talk about solutions. We even, for a while, had a um, trolley that would go, people could park and, you know, go to the Kona stores on Ali'i Drive and, and do some shopping. We have been trying to work with them. It's not as easy as one may think. As far as you know, the taxing and stuff like that, that starts at the council, um, whether we're going to, to do that or stuff, I actually think that is a good idea that we give them a break, but it's not something that as mayor I can just say, hey, I'm not gonna tax you. Okay, two more questions specific to Kona regarding the building of a new hospital in Kona. The articles I read said it wouldn't be completed until 2035. What are plans to get us a hospital sooner than 11 years from now? And again, these questions are coming from readers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I guess it Mitch this time sure. in chemo. Yep. Yeah, we, we've been having actually a lot of conversations with uh, different hospitals. Um, and there's actually three different groups that are looking. One of which is um, the Queens, and I think Queens has the property below or right around Costco. I think that is gonna happen. We've been talking, I understand Kaiser is interested, and then the Hawaii Island Health uh, Care System um, with the hospital, they are also working on the possibility. Healthcare is a huge, huge, huge issue on this island and on this side it's even huger when I, when I had my heart attack four years ago I was on this side of the island and I almost died because there is no cath lab on this side of the island I was taken to Waimea and then had to be taken to Hilo I've been working a lot with um, some of the people on this side uh, the philanthropist and trying to get them to get some money out there's a lot of interest um, about getting this done, and there's actually a lot of movement happening right now. I think it will happen probably in the next six years. Okay, chemo, the hospital. Yeah, thank you. So I am a healthcare provider. This is right up my alley. I'm a psychologist. I was the CEO of the Hawaii Bay, uh, Bay Clinic, and I helped merge uh, the Bay Clinic with the West Hawaii Community Health Center. That was my initiation. We partnered with uh, Richard Taft, 
And, and, um, and now we went from 10 clinics to, to 18 clinics. Uh, we serve the whole island. Uh, but yes, we do need a hospital. And, and I, I, I got to tell you, um, this, is, this is like dire need. We can't wait till 2035. That's impossible. You know, we, we, we have candidates running right now. That's their primary platform. Tim Dalehouse, right there. He's, this is the number one issue, and that's my number one issue too. It's health, right? You got to go all the way Hilo. That's in, that's. How does everybody feel in Kona if you have a heart attack? That's ridiculous. You know, you you know how much fatalities that has occurred from having a a heart situation here, and you got to get all the way to to South Kona. People are literally dying on the government's tab. That ain't acceptable. That has to be the number one priority for for West Hawaii. It has to be, and so that's, and, and so how you make that happen, is, is you, need, you guys know Hawaii, it's all relationship based. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the candidate who has experience in three branches of government. Department of Health is a big department. I worked there for 15 years. Okay, I've established relationships with, with every other department in the, at the state level, especially the health department. Okay, I also worked at the county as the executive for the Office of Aging. I understand county, okay, I, I know how it, I know the, the county dynamics and the state dynamics. You, only, you gotta work in two to see how the fingers get pointed. And then I also worked for Bay Clinic, which is a federally qualified health center. I worked for the feds. You wanna get a hospital bi built? It's not gonna happen in this administration. Generation. I can tell you because, because the relationships are not there. We got the relationships. I got the relationships and I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Okay, last question specific to Kona. This is to Chemo Sports. Uh, the old A field is way too small to accommodate so many sports. Kona definitely needs more space for youth to play sports. What's the plan to provide more fields? Absolutely, so like I said earlier, I'm a psychologist, right? And so people, you know, we talk about mental health. So I wanna also be uh, a champion of mental health. Um, but mental health starts with the county. I mean, if you want to alleviate the burdens and the stress of parents, the best way to do it is get those kids to go to practice. Okay, that's automatic two hours of rest time. All right, also it gets the kids away from the parents and it gets the coaches to start coaching and then communities to start connecting. Sports is super, super important. That should be a, one of the top five priorities for the county. The fact that you cannot hit a home run in this field because it's too small is unacceptable. Okay, and you got baseball, this is a baseball island, right? You got baseball athletes going to the professional level be because of the, the practice that they had as a kid. We have to find space for fields. We got the space, we don't have the political will. We can get it done under the Alameda administration. Okay, Thank Mitch. You. Yeah, you know, we absolutely do have the political will and we've brought this issue back and it's on the table. We're going through EAs for the West Hawaii Regional Sports Facility. It was dead, and we've brought life back to it. You know, we're looking at wastewater over here, taking that wastewater, using R1 water to water the fields. Water is going to be a huge issue. That's one of our key things that we're working on right now. We've brought the committees back together. We've started back with the plans. You know, we talk about this and we work on this, not just talk, we're actually working. There's plans that have been dropped, there's EAs, there are things in the system at this time as we speak. Okay, EAs, environmental assessments. Right. Uh, let's move on to wastewater or segue, actually. Uh, we understand that the county is actively pursuing replacing or upgrading the Hilo wastewater treatment plant. The Kealakehe wastewater treatment plant is also deficient with partially treated wastewater flowing to the ground by the Kona police station and moving the short one quarter mile into Honokohau Harbor. Uh, what are your plans to upgrade, and I guess in general, uh, wastewater, a major issue, particularly mm -hmm. given these recent uh, spillages? Um, I believe it's Mitch and then Chemo, is that right? No, it's my turn, I think. We'll make it Chemo and then right. Mitch. Go ahead, Chemo. See, a leader stands up for what is right. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kidding. But hey, I got to tell you, um, so we had this discussion last night. So let me just start with Hilo and then I make my way to, to, uh, to Kona. So our Hilo Wastewater Treatment Center in, in Keokaha is, is the worst in the nation, all right? They had two studies, one in the Kim administration, one in, in uh, Mitch's administration, and same results, right? You got one in Pipikio, one in Paipaiko, and then the one in Kealakehi, but the one in Keokaha, I gotta tell you, it's an environmental hazard that's, that's waiting to happen. Um, Mitch talked earlier in a debate, said it's, that's what keeps him up at night. That would keep me up at, at night too. Um, so it, it's, it's, and it's not an emergency waiting for happen, waiting to happen, it's an emergency now. Okay, go figure, three and a half million gallons of sewage 
every day, that's, I did the math, that's seven Olympic swimming pools of sewage every day that's being flowing down to the Kyokaha Wastewater Treatment Center. Now, get this, if there's a break or a rupture, that won't stop the, 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 the flow. It, it's gotta, I mean, all of us tonight, within 24 hours, we're gonna have to use the bathroom, okay? We're gonna flush the toilet, guarantee. That's gotta go someplace, all right? So it, it's gonna continue, yet there is no plan. I mean, we talked about, said there's a plan. I checked again today. So this is how the Alameda administration would work. I would take my team down, civil defense, I don't know, National Guard, um, Army of Engineers, and we would, I, would, I would say, where would the most likely break be? Would it be there? Okay, if it's there, then you gotta evacuate that house, and you gotta close off that road. Okay, where's the second likelihood? If it's there, then you gotta put a, a, a brim, and you gotta divert the sewage from going into the ocean so it goes there. Like, like I, we would have plans. We wouldn't wait for it to happen. Like this administration. Real quick, Kiala Kei, because I wanna make sure I monitor my time so Mitch can also have uh, to share his thoughts. So Kiala Kei, here's the deal. Uh, this current administration wanted to fight it. $200,000, you wanted to pay a, an attorney to fight it. That's what I heard. You can fact check me. But hey, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend $200,000 trying to fight it. Maui tried to fight it, right? 10 years, they ended up spending $7 million in attorney fees. Just as, as much it would have cost to fix it in the first place. So my thing is, Kalake, don't fight it, fix it. Thank you. Mitch, I'm guessing you want to respond. I absolutely want to <laughs> respond. You know, fix it. $160 million, you know, there's a lot of things that I hear during this campaign, you know, spending money we don't have. And so I haven't heard where you would take the money to fix everything that, you know. Let me answer, I, I got, wait, I got wait, 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 Let's let Mitch finish. Okay. So let's, let's go to KLK. KLK is a big problem. We started working on that from day one. I remembered, you know, last night, I didn't remember exactly what happened. I actually had one of our executive assistants start working with civil defense and wastewater. They actually did come up with a plan for the Hilo wastewater facility. I, you know, went back and checked on this. Part of this plan, we actually went out and we got funds from FEMA to help pump back into other parts of the wastewater facility. We actually looked at digging a hole. It would, wouldn't be, you know, it would take too long and it wouldn't solve the problem. So there is a plan to fix it. Second on that, we went out and we designed a plan to fix it. That design went out for a bid. There was a protest on the bid. My understanding that protest was just list, lifted uh, either yesterday or uh, I believe it was yet lifted yesterday. I've been in Honolulu all day, didn't have a chance to take a look and see if they open the bids. But I understand there are several people that were bidding. We expect to start building there in the next month or two. Once you have a bid, there's still work that needs to go on. So we are working on that. As far as the Kealakehi, we've been working on R1. So R1 water is water that you can use to water fields and you know, sports fields at night. It's kind of a gray water, you can use it for a whole bunch of different things. We've actually been working on designs for R1 and going through different uh, communications for the last couple of years before the lawsuit. A lot of people don't understand what the lawsuit is. The lawsuit isn't saying to, to build it. We've been working together in the lawsuit. We've come up with some agreements and now we're working together to come up with some of the solutions. The solutions that we're working on don't go to the plan that the last administration had, which would cost $160 million. To build a plan, it takes a long time. You're hiring engineers. The plan for the Gila wastewater, I kid you not, is about four feet wide and about yay high. That, that didn't happen overnight. There's a lot of work that goes into these things. And then there's a lot of other government red tape that needs to happen. So we have been diligently working on that plan for the uh, Kealakea wastewater. We have a plan moving forward for R1. That is our goal. That is actually the goal of the group that we, we have this lawsuit with. But we couldn't just say, yeah, we're gonna do this. What they were suing for, what we've come to agree, are two different things, but we're working together now. Okay. And it's gonna happen. Thank you. Kimo, he says he's, the Roth administration is making progress. What was the question? <laughs> I just heard Mayor uh, Roth okay. say that they've been making progress on uh, wastewater, and I thought oh, you yeah. wanted to jump oh, for in. Sure. 
Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to say anything, we can move on to the no, next I, question. I, but... I thought it was a question. I thought it was a question. But no, I mean, yeah, so where are we going to get the money? So, you know, funds is a result of relationships. I mean, we, 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 you know, we need to connect with Brian Schatz and Maisie Hirono and Joe Tukuda, right? And, and Ed Case. I mean, these, these are relationships, right? These are relationships that I have because I've developed them over the years. Um, and then we need relationships with our state folks and our county council because the mayor, you know, the mayor is just one person, right? I mean, you got nine county council members, you got state and house representatives. So it's a together answer. Where we can get the revenue, it's together because the county okay. council, they also uh, have the same goals in mind too. All right, Rich, work with them. are you having those relationships, those conversations? Yes, we, we are having those relationships. We've had great relationships with our federal and our state. We've actually brought in more grant funds this year, I mean, this administration, I think, than in past. Um, we are, we, we have amazing relationships with our federal partners. How about okay. the county? How about the county? Council? All right, yep. let's move we on. Have... Staying with this topic, generally cesspools are a serious issue and they keep adding sewage to the ocean we swim in. On the 8th of September, there was a sewage spill and the news states to avoid swimming. The news says avoid swimming in Kailua Pier. Again, these are not my questions, but how are you gonna help the sewage infrastructure? This is specific to cesspools. And I believe now it's Mitch and then Chemo. Yeah, so this is probably one of the hugest problems that we're gonna be facing for the next 20, 30 years. 2050, I think we have to get off of cesspools um, is that the I'm, EPA requirement? I think that's a state requirement. State requirement. Um, so one of the things that we've done is we went out and we've hired, uh, hired a consultant that's looked at different options. We've come out and done several community meetings. We were in this room. I know several of you came to a lot of those meetings trying to work together with the community because this is not a problem that we're just going to be able to throw money at that we have. For Puna alone, I, I realize we're in Kona. But I think people have to understand the enormity of this problem. The study showed for Puna alone, put wastewater in, we're talking between four and $13 billion. That's for one district. Now you take the rest of the island and you try to figure this out. This is something we are going to need to work together on. You know, we, we are working on grants. We've been not only working with our federal partners at the legislative levels, at the con congressional levels, we've been working with our federal partners at the department levels. We have a great relationship now with EPA. When we came in, that relationship was really tough. They're helping us look for funding. So a lot of things that we're, we're doing on this, but this is gonna be one of those problems that we all are gonna to need to work on. Okay, chemo, the topic is uh, cesspools, septic tanks. How are you gonna help the sewage infrastructure? Yeah, I, I agree with Mitch um, on some of that. I, I, think, I think I would push back uh, more because you know, a septic tank in Mauka areas, our earth has natural filtration. Of course, in lower, lower areas, um, you, you gotta address it. Um, and, I, and I hope by, by that time, we have a, a, a different system besides septic. I mean, septic's not the whole ideal. It's not, you know, they, they gotta be something, something better than that. Um, but it is what it is, so. But I, but I gotta tell you, again, the, the, the mayor cannot do anything without the county council. And the mayor's current relationship with the county council is, is hindered. I, I was under Mayor's Billy Kinoy and Mayor Harry Kim, and I've never, I've never experienced an overrided, an, an overrided veto. There's four in this administration. So how that works is county council comes up with, a, with an, an idea. They wanna turn it into an ordinance. Uh, Mitch doesn't like it, he vetoes it. Now, if the county council overrides that veto, you know they ain't, getting, they, they ain't agreeing on stuff, okay? And they didn't agree on stuff four times. The mayor cannot do nothing without the county council. That's why your county council people in districts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, especially you folks, six, seven, eight, nine, super important. Our administration, first thing, we'll go on a retreat. I will be meeting with the county council at least once a, once once a week or if not one, at least once a month to just hear because they know their districts better than anybody else. In fact, the mayor should be their support. Okay, uh, Thank Mitch, you. I know you want to respond on your relations with the council. So, you know, di different bills have different relationships with the council and you know, it's interesting, before our administration, the mayor would not sit down with council members. We have an open um, invitation and we meet with a lot of our council members regularly, 
You know, some people take us up every month. Some people take us up every couple of months. Um, we can't force them to come in more than they want to come in, but we have great uh, meetings with our council members. And, you know, we can disagree on different issues, but we disagree to disagree, and the, you know, we generally work together, I think, quite well. Okay. This next question, before we move on to housing, uh, specifically housing, maybe a little bit on homelessness, uh, and this would be for chemo first. Uh, we're moving somewhat, we're staying with waste in general, but now we're on land. Uh, why is the county unwilling to enforce the zoning laws? Ocean View is full of junkyards and trash properties that create an unsafe and unsavory environment in our neighborhoods. Another question tied to that, too many abandoned vehicles? Mm -hmm discarded appliances and owners who don't keep their land clean. That's to you, sir. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, I, I think the county's doing the best job they can with what they got on those abandoned vehicles. They have a, a great program. Uh, it's understaffed. And so no, no discredit to the county. I think they're doing a, the best job they can with that. I would just add, you know, if I was a county's consultant, I would say, you know, we, we, should, we should find property in Ocean View, uh, Mitch, and maybe like a, like a two acres, right? And, and we should contract. Uh, out a uh, towing company or, or a couple of to towing companies, and we should just just make it an initiative to go get, go get all those cars in places where it's unsafe and p put a fence around, a big fence. You can put wires so nobody jumps in and steal parts and just leave it there for now because it's a, it's a safety issue. Um, and then that, that's what I would do for, for Ocean View. Is that going to be on the west side or the east side? That's the, <laughs> oh, oh, no, I know where Ocean View is, but would there be a, that's where you would have it is in Ocean View? I, I would do it in Ocean View. There's so much land in Ocean View. I, I would find county land, fence it off, uh, two acres, put a barbed wire fence atop, big old gate, and just put all those vehicles there for now until we can figure out what to do. That's, that's an interesting that. idea, Mitch. Yeah, you know, I, I wish it was so easy for us to put a junkyard on a piece of property. There's a whole bunch of different um, regulations that are outside the county, state and I think federal regulations about where you're dumping, what's happening with the oils and things like that that are coming through. Um, I, I like the idea, um, but it, it's not that, that simple. You know, we have a lot of complaints that we get throughout the county. Um, we have a, a limited staff, just like the pizza for the budget. We have a limited staff and you may say, well, just hire some more people. Um, it's unfortunately not that easy. You know, we talked a little bit about positions out on the Kona side. We have a very difficult time getting people who want to work for the county or want to work for the hotels or want to work for the stores or want to work out here on, uh, you know, it's very expensive to live out here. And what we pay is kind of set by state, um, state uh, collective bargaining rules. So we'd love to pay people more to work out here. We'd love to, to be able to do those things to solve the problem, but it's not just easy as saying, we're gonna hire more people. Okay, let's shift to uh, housing. And by the way, we have passed the half hour mark. We're nearly at the 45 <laughs> minute mark. This thing is just oh. flying by, isn't it? <laughs> and, and so we're, that's just great. Um, this is not, uh, well, let's just bring it out. Is Hawaii County, Hawaii County is considering major changes to short-term rental permits or permitted areas. Is it a settled policy in the county? There's mention of Bill 121, Bill 123 on Ohana, Ohana housing. This is a, a broader question on short-term rentals, something that Maui, as you know, the legislature passed a bill. Maui's looking at taking out 7,000 of these units, getting people back, regular people, uh, back into housing. I think this is Mitch first and then Chemo. So, Short-term rental permits controlling those properties. Yeah, so I think every, well, I think our council and, and many people have realized that the current laws we have on short-term vacation rental are very flawed. Um, so the council has been working very diligently on coming up with solutions. Uh, we are trying to support some of those solutions. Uh, what comes out of the council, I still don't know what, what that's going to look like. But I think one of the big things that we need to do is we need to get a whole um, and a little bit control of our platforms like Airbnb and Verbo and, and um, these people. They should not be able to rent places that are not licensed to be rented. We need to make sure that you know we have housing 
for our local people to live in. One of, one of the problems during COVID is people started selling their homes to people from the mainland who don't live here and started building housing that our local people can't live in right now because they're being rented out. We need to get a hold of that situation to make sure that our kids have a place to live, our local people have a place to live. And so we do support the council in their efforts to make changes. What those changes are yet, um, I, I, we're not there yet, so I can't say, yeah, I'm definitely gonna sign it, because I haven't seen what it is. But I'm, I'm very encouraged to see that they're taking the work up. And I gotta tell you, it's not easy work that they're doing, because a lot of people, um, have a lot of opinions on it. And so I give a lot of credit to our council members for being courageous to do the right thing and take this on. So some locals make money off of those properties, yeah. right? Other people take yeah. advantage of that. Right. Outside investors. Kima, we're staying with the topic of uh, sure. short-term rentals. Yeah, I mean, so my sister's a, a realtor and, you know, I mean, I got realtors on our, on our team and, and we, you know, they weigh in on this, right? So, so even the realtors are, are, are concerned about it. Um, yeah, and, and you know the local. There's some local families that, that make money off of it. That's their that's their revenue, but it, but it's not much, and and it's very controlled. Now you got to go figure. Short-term rental is somebody who you know under 30 days. If they're living there more than 30 days, then it's just a month-to-month -month rental, I guess. So so short-term rental. That means you got bodies that you don't know in and out of your neighborhood. Okay, they're coming to your neighborhood. They're walking up and down the streets. You don't know who they are. They, there's no there's no background checks. They could be a pedophile. They could be a criminal. Right? There's, so, so I'm very concerned about, about uh, vacation rentals in, in neighborhoods that it wasn't meant to be. So if you want to have a vacation rental, you gotta, it has to be in the correct places, right? Commercial. Um, and so also it, takes, it, it, it hurts the tourism industry as well, right? There's so many vacancies now in, in the hotels because of these illegal vacation rentals. So yeah, you know, Mitch and I agree on this, but we need enforcement. Okay, for the illegals. Now, for the legals, they, I think they should put a cap on it. it, it like maybe put a cap. Like, hey, in this this district, you only can have seven. You know, like how they do with the solar panels. You know, like, right? In certain places, you, you put a cap. And then, or if you cannot put a cap because of legal reasons, then maybe put a time limit. All right, you can be a vacation renter for five years. All right, after that, rent it to the local people, because vacation rentals are are hurting the economy. Uh, the the rental economy because it's it's taking away rental options for our local people my children for example so it's something that we would address aggressively i really like the ohana homes i pushed that two years ago and i i think i, I want to take at least five percent credit for the county council pushing <laughs> it forward okay because that was my big pitch because my i, I gotta tell you i got seven kids they, they would love to live in the back of my house. I have one acre, right? But the restrictions is so crazy. Like it has to, like it has to be attached to your house. It can't be bigger than 500 square feet. It can't have a kitchen. That's ridiculous. If you already own land, because the best way to, to, to make housing affordable is this, materials are not gonna get cheaper, right? Labor is not gonna get cheaper. So the only variable you can play with is land. So if you already own land, government should get out of the way and let you build whatever you can afford on your land. Well, here's another oh, variable. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hold on now. Another variable to this is size, and there's been a tiny homes movement uh, that is having some success, particularly on Oahu, where we have far less land than the Big Island. Let's stay with this for a moment. What do you think about these tiny homes that would, in some cases, there may be bathroom facilities separate or kitchen facilities? Sure. Because they're too small. But sure, sure. Let me just add some, that? Right, let me add some definitions here. So, tiny, so there's a tiny home, then there's a modular home, and then there's, you know, little homes. So, so tiny homes... My definition is homes that are under 200 square feet. Those homes are used for homeless, the homeless pretty much. It's, it's, it's transitional, it's, it's emergency. Uh, I don't have a problem with those homes, okay, because that's filling a need. Um, now, for that to be the, the, the norm, no. Nobody wants to live in a 200 square feet house unless you're in transition. Okay, now the modular homes, I think is a, is a great idea. Some of them come um, prefabricated, that decreases the cost. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't mind that. I, in fact, I think we should encourage it because it'll help the, the purchaser. Uh, it, it'll be a lot uh, less expensive. Okay, tiny homes, modular yeah, homes. I, I like the idea of tiny homes. And it's not just 200 feet. It could be up to 500. We've, I have some friends that have a tiny home in Volcano. Uh, I've seen tiny homes across the United States. There's a whole movement as we look at uh, land planning 
tiny homes make sense for a lot of people. Realize that you're not forcing people to live in a tiny home. People are making decisions to live in a tiny home. And I think it's something that we should be looking at. And if Kimo's is going to take 5% for the ADUs, accessory <laughs> dwelling units, I'm going to take 25 because I've had conversations with uh, council members <laughs> I, I, I prior to them doing it. <laughs> All right. So for you, Mitch, it's not just a transitional thing is what I'm hearing. Is that yeah, right? right? OK, got it. Do you realize like, we're early like on the, the? I like to fact check that, though. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I rent a tiny cottage in Manoa, and I'm paying $1,300 a month, but that's another story. Yeah. We're moving, can you believe we're only on the fourth topic here? Animals. Thank God we finally got to animals. Um, let's start with this. Why don't we have a functional animal control over a year after a new administrator was hired, calls go unanswered, messages never returned, loose dogs are all over the streets of Ocean View. This is a major safety concern related to that. Another question, how will you support efforts to humanely control community cats. So I guess we did end up getting to dogs and cats after all. I've already forgot the order. Is that yeah. Mitch and then Chemo, yeah? Okay. Ah, go for it. Chemo, you. you're on. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, I get, a, I get calls all the time about this, and I'm not even in office, okay? And, and it's an issue, because I, I, I live on a ranch uh, when I grew up with cows and horses, and so I'm very connected to the hunting community and to the fishing community. And, and they have solutions, and, and they're not feeling very connected to, to the county right now. So we have a, a cat issue, we have a dog issue, we have a goat issue, and we have a pig issue, okay? I'm not even talking about the rhinoceros beetle right now, so just saying. So yes, yes, we have animal control issues, and we have an animal control department that's been around for um, over a little two years, and there's not any control of our animals. And so, and that's why I'm, I'm fielding these calls. And so, there are a lot of solutions out there for goats and pigs. One of them is connect with the, the hunting community. Uh, let's let's get, work on a gaming game management plan to, to control that part of it. Now, for dogs, there's a whole canine community that, that you want to connect to. We would have a task force just for dogs because we, we got, I, I got a whole bunch of ideas for dogs around dog training. And then for cats, that, that's another task force because they, they got different issues and concerns, especially the inhumane ways of using rat poison to kill them. That's, that's unacceptable. Okay, let's stay just with the, the animal control because that's how the question started. Sure. And the, the questioner is saying there really has not been any animal control and, and Kimo more or less agrees with that. Mitch? So, you know, I think people need to understand when we came into office, prior to our administration, the Humane Society, which does an amazing job with animals, decided they did not want to keep the animal control contract. And so, the previous administration brought in another organization and when we came in we were getting all sorts of complaints that this other administration wasn't fulfilling the job and we, we had complaints literally that we should be prosecuting them for cruelty to, cruelty to animals and so we ended up canceling that contract tried to get another outside agency to do it couldn't do it, brought it into the police department as a temporary fix while we looked. We still could not get a, an agency. We created a new agency, and I think it's been just about a year since we created the, the agency. When the Humane Society left, they took the main shelter with them in KL. So we had a one shelter in Kona that needs a lot of repairs still. So we went out and we've paid millions of dollars to build up, well, we bought a, a shelter and we've been fixing that. We've been working with Ka'u. We have a place that we're looking at over there. We're working in um, Waimea at Parker Ranch. We think we have a, a place. So we've been spending money to buy shelters, which is a big problem. We get in about 300 dogs a month. I think we have space for about 150 at any one time. So we've reached out to a lot of animal con uh, care groups. They take a lot of our animals and they do the adoption. So that is happening. In the meantime, we had to hire people. And you know, again, hiring people has been very difficult, not just for the county, but for everybody it's been difficult. We've more than filled half the staff, and so uh, we have another call taker that's come on. Um, we have an, a veterinarian, which is 
been huge because the veterinarian can now do spay and neuter and some other things rather than hiring out because we spent a lot of money doing that. We're also doing education programs with the schools and with the community. And you know, we're doing a microchipping clinic every 60 days. As we get more people come on and as we get more facilities, the um, animal control facility is going to get better and better. I can tell you though, where we're at now is much better than where we came in with the agency after Humane Society. And so we've been working with animal control, excuse me, animal experts to build this agency. It takes time. Okay. And All right. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, Kimo, you brought up, we are going to just go back to you. You brought up feral goats. Um, feral goats, West Hawaii, they eat invasive grasses, they reduce fire fodder. We saw what happened on Maui. And yet the Department of Land and Natural Resources regularly shoots goats from helicopters. Do you support their eradication program? Why or why not? I don't support it without the support of the local hunters. Um, some of the hunters don't, don't appreciate it because it's, it's, wasted, it's wasted meat, right? We're trying to be sustainable here in, in Hawaii and, and that's meat that could go to families. And, and the hunters could, they, they have a plan. We just gotta, we gotta reconnect with them because there's, there's a distrust right now with, with, with county government. And I gotta tell you, I, I see some Waikoloa fans here. Man, I'm in Waikoloa, you know how much goats is now, a, it's, it's a public health issue. I mean, they're running across the street. If I'm a, if I'm a, a kid or, or, or a fragile senior, I, I don't wanna walk around the block. I, I'm, I might get killed by a goat. And these are big goats with horns. You're a pretty big guy. I don't <laughs> I'm saying, so you know, this is a major problem. It's a safety issue. Um, and so, yeah, I think the county just, we just need to, uh, to do a better job. But, you know, Mitch talked a little bit about, you know, it's hard to hire folks. Well, I got to tell you, working for the county is, is not like when I grew up, okay? I go back generations, and, and uh, working for the county was a prized employment. Like, like, that was like the employer of choice. But now it's not, because the county employees, they're not feeling the love. There's a management, there's a management issue, right? Mitch talks about, hey, you know, if you're going to get changed, he's going to have to change his cabinet. Well. Not all departments, but most of the departments, the cabinet heads, that's part of the problem. Okay, how I know is because the workers are demoralized. They feel demoralized. They don't, you know, there's people calling in sick. Um, in fact, and that's why we got the support of, of the HGEA, which are the white collar workers in the county. We got the support of UPW, which is the, the blue collar workers in the county. We got the support of SHOPO, which is the police department. And, you know, and if, and if the fire makes the right choice, we'll get their support too. There's only four unions that, that, that the county workers work for. And they're asking for a new head coach. So, so change is important for them. And, and they're begging you folks through their endorsement. All right, Mitch, please ask Mitch, for, for so administration. you're the head coach, uh, respond so, to that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm actually gonna respond to that. Let's, let's start with the unions. Well, let's start with employees. I don't have to tell you, because you guys see it at your restaurants, you see it in the hotels, you see it everywhere. This is not a problem that the county deals with alone. I was talking to the mayors from Kauai and, and Honolulu together, and they're having the same kinds of issues. You know, as far as the unions, let's get this clear. The reason why the unions did not support me was because we didn't agree to give every county worker 25% hazard pay for two years of their time. We're talking about $70 million. Now, there's been a lot of stuff that people have said, well, there's federal funds for that. There is not federal funds that were given for hazard pay. We got hazard pay and we said, you know what? We need to take care of the people of this county. And so we used a lot of those hazard pay funds to you know, make sure that people weren't evicted from their housing. We used those hazard funds to make sure that people were eating. We used those hazard funds to help businesses not go under. You know, and you know, the other part the unions aren't telling you is that we've made a couple of offers. And so the unions are saying, well, the mayor hasn't been at the table. We've made offers, generous offers, and they have not made any counter offers. It's hard to be at a table and negotiate when you're negotiating against yourself. And so the unions, make no mistake, I have a lot of county employees that come up in just about every department, thank me, you know, all the time. Um, 
we do a lot of programs to honor our county employees. We started a program a couple of months ago called Mehea Nui Oi, Because You Matter. And you can go onto our websites, and I highly recommend that you guys go onto the County of Hawaii website, and you can recognize county workers for the great work that they're doing, because there's a lot of people doing great work. And fellow employees can recognize county workers for the great work they're doing. And you know what? We've had hundreds of people who have been recognized in the county. And I've went and I've spoke to a lot of those people, and, and they're thankful. I've written hundreds of thank you cards to employees for great work that they're doing. At our cabinet meetings, I have this thing that says, you know, I don't want to hear just about the problems from county workers. From day one, I've had this thing said, tell us about the county workers that are seen doing good. And I generally write them a letter, a little card, and if you see my handwriting, it's pretty pathetic, thanking them from their work. And I go around the county and I see these cards posted at people's desks. So it's not that they're not feeling the love. There's a lot of love, and our county workers are doing amazing work. The union heads I, are the ones that decided not. Yes, you can, and I could say that hazard pay has come up quite a lot, and as you may have heard, the state worked out a deal, but that's just for, I believe, part of HGA. It's $450 right. million dollars or something. Uh, Kimo, this question is to you specifically. Would you give... Mm -hmm. Hazard pay to workers who have waited more than two years. Of course, this is from COVID. Well, let me just, yeah. And then where are you going to get the money? Sure. Well, first of all, the money was there, right? It's federal money. And as you heard it from Mitch himself, he used the hazard money for other, other things, right? So the money was there. But what, what hurts me, Mitch, is that, is that you, you used it for your business friends instead of your county employees. You know, that, that's, that's what hurts me. Is that I mean, accurate? I mean, so, you said you use it for the business All right. Like, I mean, you know, Go you ahead. gotta take care of your employees. Wait, I, 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 I want my time first. I'm not finished. All right. And let me tell you this: they're not endorsing me because of hazard pay, just because of that. Okay. The, this administration has the most employee grievances because of his his lack of management with his cabinet. Right? They're just doing whatever they like. Okay. And and they're not properly managing. And so the frontline staff is feeling demoralized. The most grievances than any other administration. Also, the most complaints. I mean, we're, we're litigating, the county's litigating complaints after complaints, almost $95,000 worth in 2023, and that's just complaints. That's, that's what they settled before they go to court. Okay, so you got people in the county, employees that are, that are demoralized, that had so much grievances, and you got people outside of the county. It's a, it's, it's, it's a one-two punch for a new administration, folks. So, so we're going to get so, that money. I know you okay, want to okay. answer, but tell me about the finance, the pizza, right? All right, so here's the deal. So the money, so that's what I want to know. So where did the money go? So if it went to small businesses... No, I want to know where you're going to get it. The, oh, where I'm going to get yeah. it? Yeah. I need to look at the budget. First of all, I don't know, where, where did it go? Can we get it back? That's what I want to know. Can we get it back, number one? If we can get it back, you got to take care of your employees because you're only as good as your county employees. The mayor can't go clean the park. The mayor can't go, you know, clean the toilets and fix the fields. The workers do it. So you got to take care of your workers first because they make the mayor look good. Those words, those okay. roads that got paved, Mitch didn't do that. Thank you, Mitch. His workers did that. Right? So here's one I hope Civil Beat goes and does a fact check because I did a fact check. I heard him saying most grievances ever. They're going through the roof. They're not going through the roof. They're on par with what we've seen in other administrations. Not true. As far as the, 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 the suits for, I think that's something we'd like to see Civil Beat do a fact check on because looking at the facts, we don't see it. You know, my job previously was a prosecutor and prosecutors have a higher ethical burden to make sure that you're using facts and not making stuff up. This is a made up fact. As far as where that money is going, we talked about it. It's not going to my friends who are small business owners. Mom and pop shops, this was done throughout the state. It was done throughout the United States. We gave funds to help people stay afloat. We helped people with rental assistance, millions and millions and millions of dollars. W would you not have, have done that? No, I we wouldn't. Gave, we, my employees matter, number one. All right. Okay. okay. I think we covered that topic. Let's move on to something not controversial, the 30-meter telescope on Mauna Kea. <laughs> we'll start with uh, Mitch here. I would like to know each candidate's position on building the TMT. Mitch. You know, I'm going to take astronomy, and I think astronomy is super important to this island. A lot of people don't realize how important um, when the, the original telescopes went up on the mountain, 
they saved this economy. You know, we have kids that are leaving Hawaii because they don't have quality jobs. If you look at a lot of the kids that are out there, um, they're interested in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. The astronomy community is one of our best links to make sure that our kids get the highest quality STEAM education. You know, when the first protest happened in 2014, I was a prosecutor and they started arresting people and they made cases. At that time I said, we should do Ho'oponopono and get people to talk. Unfortunately, neither the state or TMT was willing to do that at, the, at that time. 2018, 19 happened, we had the problems that we had. What TMT is doing now, it is meeting with the Hawaiian community, having legitimate conversations, listening, which is really important. And I think done right, we should have something up there. Whether we're gonna have it or not, that's a whole nother thing. But I think it is something that we should look at. Our native Hawaiians, indigenous Hawaiians, they navigated by the stars. Why not have the best of the best in the world for, for uh, our Hawaiian children to be proud of. So yes. Okay, mm. Kimo, to you, TMT, your position. Yeah, thank you. So you're talking to a native Hawaiian, right? With, with, with kids who would also like to thrive uh, on the islands. And so I, I've been, this is a number one issue that I took up two years ago when I decided to run. And so I've been meeting with the, with the TMT folks, with, with the astronomers, just to get their side of the story because I was a protector in 2019. So am I, am I in favor of TMT? My, my answer, which version? Not, not 2019 that Mitch was, was, was okay with, right? I, I'm, I'm okay with, with what I'm hearing in 2024. And let me tell you what I'm hearing, because this was my concerns that the, that the current TMT um, board, including the manager, is, is, is willing to consider and bring to the, to the authority, because the mayor doesn't make the decision, right? There's an authority now. The mayor has a seat at the table, okay? There's about 11 of them, and the mayor can weigh in. His vote count now, right? Right now, Mayor Mitch is, is not there. He sends uh, Steve Adams. I would be there at that table. This is my island. That's a big issue. Number two, I would, this, is, this is the conditions, right? Because it's a trust issue. I'm not against development. I'm just for responsible development, okay? You, need, you said you was gonna decommission six, decommission six, that's number two. Number three, you gotta promise the, the local community that it won't hurt the aquifer. And they said it won't hurt the aquifer, okay? You gotta promise you're not going down 18 stories. They're not going down 18 stories, they're going two stories. The other thing I proposed is I said, hey, you know, the problem with these 13 telescopes and two got decommissioned is that they never had a decommission plan before they built it. My thing, our administration is, you, before you build a massive thing like that, you need, a, you need a decommission plan. So I say, will you be willing to have a decommission plan? Yes, we will. Okay, how many years? 50 years. Could you put that, could you put a light on iron budget on how much that would cost? 50 million. Can you put that in there? Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. Okay, when you decommission six, can those jobs go to local people? Yes, it can. Okay, and here's the deal with the mountain. You only can, it's very high altitude, so you only can work four days and six hours, and you cannot move too fast, okay? So, so it's, it's very delicate, but I've studied this issue inside and out, okay? So I went to Gemini, I went to Canada, France, I talked to the head of, of Keck, right? And so my wife doesn't work for Subaru, so I don't have any conflicts of interest. I can address this issue directly, all right? And so I'm the best mayor to help move this forward without fragmenting our community. You need somebody who can build the bridges. And me being Native Hawaiian and a psychologist and in this leadership position, I think I can, I, I think I can bring a compromise. Okay, Thank I, you. Think, I know you'd like to respond, but I think we gotta move on. We are in the last half an hour. From what I can tell, nobody has left this room. That's pretty amazing. Uh, and I think it's due to these two guys right here. Let's stay on the mountain before we move on to a couple of other issues. What are you doing to prevent Pohakuloa from becoming our big island red hill? There is concerns about toxic fallout. You mentioned the aquifer. There is a renewal of the lease, I believe, that is coming up as well. Yep. And Kimo, we'll start with you on Pohakuloa. Where do you stand on the training facility? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, you know, my family, what, why I'm so versed on these issues is because in my family, I have, I have both sides, right? I have my Hawaiian family who's, who's for and Hawaiian families who's against. So this is a, a weekly discussion for us. And that's why I can approach these issues with sensitivity 
and with compromise. So, I mean, because if you think across the other side's desecration, uh, Parker Law is major desecration. So, mm -hmm. so but, but it, it's been there. It's, it's been there for years. It's, it's there to protect us. But, you know, I'm a psychologist. I ask questions, right? I want to know what, how is it benefiting the Big Island? Just, just, is it just protection? I mean, do, do they add revenue? What, what, what are they extracting from our island? You know, and, and, and if, it's a, if, it's, if it's a place for protection, can we also put something up there for peace? So that so you have one for protection, one for peace. Like, like we need to build it so that it's part of the aloha spirit and not just part of war. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Mitch. Yeah, walk so aloha. It's interesting because, uh, like I said, I was with uh, the other mayors and a group of people today, and this issue was one of the things that was was brought up. I think Pohakaloa, there's a couple of different things. One, um, we need to to change the lease. And part of this discussion is, you know, if you're going to move forward, how do you move forward? And I think we learned a lot of lessons from TMT. We need to take those lessons to heart and start working with, you know, the, the Hawaiian community and people who may be protesting up there. That's, I think, the, the biggest thing that we need to do. And if we're going to get more than a dollar, um, we should be working with that community to decide how that money is going to be spent. Mm -hmm. One of the things, in talking to the military, um, we are at a time in history, we are closer to World War III than anybody in this room has ever lived. And when you talk to the military, the place where it's most likely to start is in the Pacific. They don't worry so much about um, Europe. And so there's a lot of concern, and so being prepared is really important. What we've seen from Poakaloa PTA, during my time as mayor, we've had some huge fires, and they've been right there working with us hand in hand, making sure that our island is protected. Now, some people will say, well, it's a lot started there. Not all of them started there. The big fire uh, a couple of years ago didn't start there, but they were right there helping us, and that was amazing. We've had crashes every day almost, uh, not every day, but you know, often we have crashes that happen up on uh, the Daniel K. Noy Highway, and they are the first responders. We've had incidents happen on Mauna Kea. They are the first responders. So, you know, there is a lot of things. Also, a lot of people don't realize this, but they're doing a lot of work at PTA pr to protect the environment. They have uh, some relationships with Colorado State University. They're helping making sure that our indigenous uh, wildlife up there are taken care of. They have one of the best recycling programs in the United States up there. So there's a lot of good things that they are doing, and I think you know, we should be supporting it, but I think before we do anything, we need to have those conversations and work with the community rather than right. being at odds. I like that. By the way, that's where we're going to get our, some of our revenue because we, we, they can't keep paying dollar a year. Okay. <laughs> all right. Including TMT. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's start with uh, Mitch on this one. What plans are in place to address the 10,000 acres of eucalyptus trees planted 25 years ago, I think it's longer than that, on county land which were exchanged in lieu of owed taxes with the sugar companies? What are you going to do about eucalyptus trees? I, you know, this is Hamakua primarily. Hamakua, right? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Mitch. You know, um, one of the things that we have done, um, I want to say Hui Malama, there's a, a group out in um, Honaka'a where we've got, we did a big lease with them and they're um, growing um, native. Hawaiian plants. Um, I know ulu is a big thing that they've been planting. They've been taking back that land and actually turning it into food, working with the Hawaiian community, educating kids. We need to do more things like that uh, to make sure that we're taking care of our environment. You know, a lot of people look and just see them as trees, but trees play a very uh, big role uh, to us environmentally as well. And so, it, it's not just cut them all down either. So you, you have to have you know, some good ways, and we're working with different people on coming up with different solutions. Okay, eucalyptus trees, chemo. 
Yeah, so first of all, the, the, there's, there's a lot of eucalyptus trees, right? And uh, if you know anything about the aquifer and, and how trees play out, so it, it, it takes a lot from our aquifer, number one. Um, and so that limits our water supply. And, and number two, I think the original plan was, was to either use it for lumber or, or to use it for energy, right? To burn it and use it for energy or, or, or wood. Um, and somehow those plans got subsided. And so, I mean, we, we, we cannot continue to, to let it suck our water system as, as well as, um, you know, kind of be an invasive, uh, you know, be invasive to our, to our, to our ag land. So, okay. I mean, something needs to be done. We're in the last 20 minutes. A reminder, because uh, I know we'll be breaking at 7, uh, that please help yourself to spam musubi. Take as much as you'd like. And if you can, uh, do grab your chair and put it in these gray carriages. We would really appreciate that. If somebody wants to reach your administration or if they want to reach yours, Kimo, should you get in office, how are they going to do that? How responsive are you going to be to your community? I mean, they send an email, they come up, maybe they interrupt a live forum. Uh, Mitch, I'll start with you. Uh, what does your administration yeah. do to respond to people who reach out with questions? So there's actually several different ways that people can reach out to our administration. Um, and I, I think uh, this, this lady who just was up here uh, Ms. Roy actually reached out, and I actually had conversations uh, with her. Um, there's a place on our website for the mayor's office where you can put in complaints or you can request a meeting with the mayor, um, calling us. Um, so there, there's numerous different ways. The requests that generally come in, and a lot of people know this, I will personally reach out a lot of times and reach out and, and talk to them, find out what the issue is, set up meetings, do things like that. So we've been very active. We've also done a lot of town hall meetings and a lot of meetings where we come out to the community to hear their, their concerns. Okay, and Kimo, what do you think? Uh, what would you do if you're a mayor? How would you be open to people reaching out to you? Sure, I mean, it's a good example, right? So um, a mayor, you need, you need a quadra of skills. Right? You need people's skills, you gotta understand people, you gotta, you gotta kinda know the history um, because people are just, you know, they're just expressing what they think is right and, 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 and you know, and, and there's very few bad people in the world. I think there's only one bad person that doesn't live in Hawaii, okay? <laughs> so people have good intentions. So as a leader, you gotta be able to, to work with those different personalities. And so I'm, I'm just, that's what I do, I'm a psychologist, right? So I'm very open to feedback because everybody has their truth. And as a leader, you, you gotta hear their truth um, because somewhere along the line, in the middle between their truth and, and, and mine is, is the reality. And so, so we have a website, of course, we have Facebook, Instagram. I, I encourage everybody to check, check it out. I have videos. My website's very uh, comprehensive. It has priorities. Um, I, have, uh, I, I give up my, my personal number uh, and my, my email. And I check it daily. Uh, but I think government should be open government, right? We should have open dialogue. We should continue to do town halls. We, sh we shouldn't just do it before the election. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> We should, we, also, <laughs> right, we should also have open budgets. The budget should be open. Kauai has an open budget system where you can go in and you can see exactly what, how the funds are being used. Um, I also believe in open, open uh, communication with the media. You know, I've worked with the civil beat on the fentanyl epidemic. I've worked with the civil beat on, on COVID and, and, the, and it's all about relationships. So okay. thank you. Here's how we're gonna end this. Um, here's what we did not get to, uh, transportation issues. Climate change, renewable energy, food sustainability, agriculture, quite a lot of topics. Uh, I think the best way to end this forum is to give each of you an opportunity to say, well, what didn't you get to talk about that you feel is an important point you want to get across? I don't want to hear your, your stump speech, but something that <laughs> we haven't got to uh, that you feel that we should close with. I think what we'll do is we'll start with Chemo and then end with Mitch. Go ahead, Chemo. All right, so yeah, so homelessness. All right, we never talked about homelessness. So to me, homelessness is, 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 they're homeless not because they ran out of money, all right? Most people are homeless because they ran out of relationships, all right? They burn bridges because of addictions or mental health issues. All right, I can tell you at Bay Clinic, we, we have an outreach program. And I've been telling Mitch from, from day one in, in, in my debates that you, you shouldn't do sweeps. Number one, you shouldn't even use the word sweep because it implies that our homeless are rubbish. And these, and these are real people. So I, I, I don't use those terms. What I said is relocate. 
um, and you cannot relocate your homeless if there's no place to relocate them to. So from day one, from day one, I was saying, hey man, you, you, you cannot just relocate them without no place to relocate them to. Now there was a point in time count, right? And the and, and this is where I feel like the county is, is misleading. Okay, it's misleading in saying that there's a decrease in homelessness because I think, I think the point in time count was, was in error. I think the county is misleading when they say that the permit's taking 28 days. I've never met anybody whose permit took 28 days. I think the county is misleading when they say they have 8,100 homes in the pipeline. No one knows how, how a home gets into the pipeline and, and, and there's no deadline to the pipeline. So that's just, that's just verbiage, okay? Um, our, our administration will be super transparent. So for homelessness, you, you, there's different types, right? You, you, you gotta, with the mental health and addictions, they need support. There's people sleeping in their cars. They, they could be a Ipana, a sacred place for them to, to do that. But I'm also concerned about the almost, almost homeless, okay? The person who's one paycheck away from being homeless, a senior, a veteran, a child who's aging out of the foster care system, a domestic violent situation where a woman wants to leave the home but has no place to go, these are the almost homeless. And I know it because I'm in the health profession and I won't just focus on the homeless, I'll focus on the almost homeless. And lastly, because I know, you, you know I get the side eye look, I can see peripheral. <laughs> so Chad's like, hurry up, bro, you only get two more minutes. Okay, lastly, I know corner folks are looking at us guys from Hilo and say, oh, what's up with Kimo? You know, he's just another Hilo guy. You know, he might be even more helocentric. Know this, I got family in every part of this community, okay? If you ask me where I'm gonna die and where I'm gonna spread my ashes, it's gonna be right here, because that's commitment. And that's my definition of local. If you're gonna spread your ashes on this, uh, on this island or in this state, you as local as anybody else, okay? And that's because that's what connects us, all right? So just know this, that I will look for geographic parity, even if I live helo, okay? Number two is this, I know some of you guys are afraid of change. Mitch said last night that change equals a stop in progress. Absolutely not, not, not my change, okay? If, if there's a program or, 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 a pro, or a project that is kind of stalled, we will accelerate it. We will inject it with some enthusiasm, okay? We have staff that is willing to work hard to continue those projects. And it's, it's a matter of motivating them and letting them know that we're in this together. We need an administration that will connect with our workers. Change will not stop. 64% of you in this last election voted for somebody else, okay? That means 64% of you want change. Right now, our campaign is the only change option you got. Okay. okay, okay, so please, trust our change. Thank you. Mitch. Yeah, stats can be read all sorts of just different ways, and last night I said this, and I'll say it again. You know, over 70% decided that you're not the change that they're looking for, so you can read that any way you, you, you want to read it. Let's take a look at some of the things. This election isn't about rhetoric. We've heard a lot of rhetoric about, you know, this, I think this and, and this. It's about solutions. It's about actual things that have happened. You know, Kimo talks about the 28% number of decrease in homelessness and the point of count time, point of time count. You know, that is something that our office didn't put together. It was put together with, with agencies that Chemo's actually been working with. You know, if you take a look at that number though, it's 28%, over 1,000 homeless people on our island, 28%, 280, 720 people. So you still see people there. We're trying to reach out to a whole bunch of different people. And you know, the people that you're seeing oftentimes are the people that don't want services. The fact of the matter is, you know, specific articulable facts, we put over $10.5 million to work with the agencies that, you know, Chemo likes to work with to make sure that they're getting mental health treatment, to make sure that they're getting housing, to make sure that, you know, their issues are being taken care of. So, yes, progress takes time, but we have made progress We've built the foundation and things are moving forward. And so if you take change, not all change is good. And especially not good if you don't know the specifics about what the change is. We get criticized for a whole bunch of things during this campaign, housing, the permitting program. You know, the fact of the matter is, Hawaii Island has issued more housing permits than any other island in the state. And we went from worst in the state to the best in the state. That's not according 
to me, that's according to you, Hero, the, the University of Hawaii Economics Resource Organization. We were the only county to degree poverty. That's not coming from Mitch Roth. That's coming from studies done by the Aloha United Way when they looked at the, the ALICE, Asset Limited Income Constrained and Employed. That's, you know, facts. You look at the amount of infrastructure that we've taken care of. When we came into office, the county was averaging about 16 miles of road pavement a year. This year we did 34. We've doubled that. You know, progress, you know, we're seeing progress in every department. Even our parks, you know, we brought up how many different parks we've fixed. Lots of things are happening. We've been putting the money in as far as money. When we came into office, the county budget was in question of whether we were going to be able to survive. Today, we have our best bond rating ever. That's, that's important. And that's, these are articulable and noticeable facts. We've done that, so we don't have to say how we're going to do it. We've done it. What we haven't heard is we're going to change by doing this, by doing this. You know, my job before I was the mayor was a prosecutor. I started something called community-oriented prosecution. Change is about making positive change. I was, you know, I wasn't afraid to take on the difficult cases like Peter Boy and successfully prosecute we just have where it couldn't have been done. Yeah. I wasn't afraid to start community-oriented prosecution in, in the state, the first restorative justice program in the state. We did that as a prosecutor. We continue to do that as a team okay. here at the mayor's office. And the, today, the county is in much better shape than where we found it. Thank right. you. Thank you all. Civil Beat. Civil Beat has no control over the weather. <laughs> but I, I, sure I share with you welcoming the rain, a blessing of some sort. I want to thank very much Dr. Kimo Alameda and Mayor Mitch Roth. I think you both were terrific tonight. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Grab some musubi. Please put your chairs away at the carriage and drive safely on your way home. Thank you. <laughs>